Hi guys, my name is Kim and today I will be reviewing Superman Action Comics Volume 2 Bulletproof. You probably watched my first volume rant rave of this series, but surprisingly enough today this volume is better. So I rated this volume a 3 out of 5, yes that is one star more than the first volume. The timeline is still a little weird, we've got you know, t-shirt stories from his younger years and then adult stories with his main costume, so it's still a little out of whack, but it's calmed down a little bit. Honestly, I thought the first volume was just like a really kind of, let's get all these Superman crap out, and now they're just like, okay, wow, we've just used up most of the Superman stories. What do we do now? Okay, let's just, let's just calm it down. So that's sort of what this volume felt like. It was still better than the first volume, but they've just really slowed it down so that it's at a normal human speed for us to process. Thank you. So obviously volume one was establishing, establishing, about establish, establishing Sean Connery. So obviously volume one was about establishing Superman in his uh, younger years and then showing him progress into a better superhero. This volume we had a few more people introduced into the mix. We had K-Man, Kryptonite Man, and we also had the beginning ties of the Justice League brought in. Now it'll be very confusing if you haven't read a Justice League book. A. Me. Very confusing. So I was left feeling WTF, we had Batman and Superman in there talking about all these things that I have no clue what was going on. Basically I think it's because DC Comics wants us to go purchase everything ever so we can all be poor and they can have all their money to do what they want. It would be better if they just explained what was going on in there because some people just don't want to buy other books. They just love their main book and if you don't explain things in that main book when it's connected to other books, people get angry and they will stop buying the book. So this system will not work. So please, we best if you just briefly explain what's going on so we can understand. In this volume, I just want to talk about this alternate universe that they created. A waste of an issue. I don't even know what they were doing with it. In this alternate universe, they had Superman as an African American and he was the president, but his secret identity was Superman. Now they also had Wonder Woman and most of the Justice League were all African American as well, which is fine, but just very confusing about what concept they were trying to put here. The whole story wasn't very flushed out very well and it seemed really like they were just like, let's just do this. Just <laughs> I'm so happy with having cultural people in it. I am so happy seeing this, but please, please don't vomit a storyline at us when it doesn't work, okay? If you want to integrate this into a comic, it needs to be done smartly. Otherwise, people will see right through your marketing scheme. They will see right through to what you're really trying to do, which is just throw stuff at us and be like, we're cultural. Because honestly, this was the stupidest issue I may have ever read of Superman. It was so dumb. I just... It could have been done, it could have been plotted out so well, but no, they just wanted to just throw crap at us and be like, see, we can do, we can do stuff that involves other people. Don't, don't worry, we got it. I'll give you a general overthrow of what the story was. So basically you had Superman who was an African American. He was also the president. There are so many things wrong with that. A, everyone in the world knows who the president is. Everyone in the world sees his face all the time on the TV. They know what he looks like. They can see him if he walks outside, they'll be like, oh, that's the president of the, of the United States. Everyone knows what the president looks like. No matter who they elect in, everyone knows his face. So why on earth would you make this person Superman? Everyone in the world would know that the president is Superman. Ugh. I know there's always this huge thing with the Superman story, with him wearing glasses and people being, that's so obviously Superman. How can people not see that? This is even worse, okay? It's so just... Okay, let's, let's talk about Clark Kent in his normal story. Clark Kent is a reporter, therefore people know him from his writing. No one really sees his face, they just know his name. Occasionally they may have his face next to the article, but it's not like people will look at it all the time and be like, oh that's Clark Kent, oh yeah I see him walking, that's Clark Kent, oh yeah walking, that's Clark Kent. He's not famous in terms of his appearance, he's famous in terms of his writing abilities. And I don't know if he's super famous, but he's... He's, he's well known in the writing world. Now most of you may not know what JK Rowling or Stephen King looks like. I do because I just like to know what people look like. 
That's just me. But a lot of people wouldn't be able to spot them. They would have no clue what they look like. Why? Because they are famous for their writing, not for what they look like. They're not actors, they're not singers, they're not directors or whatever like that. They are not known for their faces. So it is sort of plausible that Clark Kent wouldn't be super known as Superman. It is not plausible for the President of the United States to be Superman and not be recognized. Holy crap, how dumb do you think your audiences are? Please, we have brains, we like to use them. Give us a chance to. Besides for that really dumb concept, that storyline had no meaning or direction at all. Just, yeah. The one thing that I really liked in this particular story was Lex Luthor in this world. Now, we all know that Lex Luthor is Superman's arch nemesis. We all know this. We know it's not got to do with what he looks like or anything like that. It's the fact that he is a god amongst humans. He has all these powers. He's, you know, the best of the best. So, obviously, Lex would hate him. In this world, in this alternate dimension, Lex is still white. So his ultimate hatred of Superman in the public eye is seen as racism because obviously Superman is African American. Now I thought this was cleverly done in the terms that as the audience we know why Lex hates Superman so much but in this alternate reality no one can see that because no one has seen him in a different light. So I thought that was very clever but that's where I draw the line at this story. That's the only thing that was interesting. Lex was also drawn a lot better in this comic, which I liked because obviously in the first one I described him as being sort of like a middle-aged overweight man. This one he was drawn a little better, but he still had that going on, which I liked about it. But basically, that's all I can really remember from this comic. It's not super memorable, but it is better than the first one in terms of its pacing. So I would suggest that you can try it out and see if you like it. I've heard that it's it's getting a lot better, action comics. That Grant Morrison isn't on it anymore, so maybe he's just decided, wow, what the hell did I just do with these? I'm gonna go do Batman. I think it may get better. I'm not sure, but I did give this a three out of five. So if you're, again, interested in a lot of complex things thrown at you, this could be the volume for you. I hope you enjoyed my review slash rant today, guys. I know I said I wasn't going to do a rant, but eventually it just comes out because that is the kind of human that I am. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you very soon, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Bye-bye.